Today's episode is brought to you by Ray-Band. Ray-Ban is the Spartan official injury prevention partner. Ray-Ban has provided athletes at all levels with medically classed, patented sports and braces since 1955. At Ray-Ban, they believe no matter what your situation, you can always reach a little bit higher. Whether you're looking for a compression wear or recovering from an injury or just need to prevent shin splints, Ray-Ban has a product for you. If you go to shop.spartan.com, you can see their knee sleeves, their elbow sleeves, they've got some KT tape. Pain is part of the game. But Ray-Ban has the products to protect and get you past the finish line. Go to Ray-Ban.com or shop.spartan.com. Yeah! Get up! Welcome to the Obstacle Racing Media Podcast with Matt B. Davis. With over 300 episodes since 2012, Matt has produced the most consistent podcast in OCR. Each episode, Matt speaks with race directors, athletes, and industry insiders to bring you the most in-depth interviews and conversations in the world of obstacle racing, adventure runs, and ultra marathons. If you have small children nearby, now is the time to put on some headphones or send them off to watch Phineas and Ferb, as there are occasionally four-letter words. Which are not bleeps. Now. Here is your host. Now here is your goddamn host. Now here is your host, fucking Matt B. Davis. Good day, everyone. Special Sunday episode coming at you. As I've spoken about in the past, crossing off Anders 2 off my calendar. I have this big list in my room, my office here, all the episodes I've got uh, in the can and we just crossed off Anders 2. Hope you enjoyed that one. Loving the feedback, guys. Several of you reaching out, talking about what you like or don't like about that, especially because it's not a typical OCR person. And you know I do like to talk to those people. I like to dig in with, uh, let's call our cousins, Ninja, CrossFit, Ultra. Uh, I like to talk to those people and just learn about stuff, um, or even totally not that, like uh, Charlie from uh, MMA. We had a great chat. Charlie Brenneman. If you missed my episode on his show, by the way, that's a winner. Go listen to that. I don't, listen, I get asked to be on a fair amount of podcasts, or I ask to be on others' podcasts as a way to to build up my own uh, resume, as it were, and I don't honestly plug them all because they're not all that great, but the episode I did with Charlie Brenneman, go to Spaniard Podcast and find Charlie Brenneman, and my episode was about a month ago, Getting Distracted. The reason you are getting this special Sunday episode is because it's a bit short, and I want to, every Tuesday, bring you a brand new episode that you've come to expect somewhere between 45 and an hour and a half, and then every Thursday is Josh and I on the Obstacle Discourse, which is, dude, it's ripping. You guys are loving it. Getting a lot of comments about that. Please keep them coming. Facebook, Instagram, tweet, any way you want to message me and say that you like the show uh, and give feedback. We love it. So quick note, I started listening to the OCR report by Will Hicks. He's talking to Jack, Jack becoming the, he's not the Adam Schefter. He's the, I don't know. What are you, Jack? Are you, are you the, um, oh, who's the fucking draft guy? Are you the Mel Kuyper of OCR? Whatever Jack is, he's a hot commodity. Everybody wants to talk to him. Uh, He's building himself a little niche. I thought I was niche. This guy's the niche within the niche uh, that everybody wants to talk to. So I'm excited about that show. I like when the level of the bar is raised, when most shows come on the scene or podcasts or websites or whatever. It's like, ugh, another, we're going to be your number one source for blah, blah, blah. And then they suck and then they flame out between six to 18 months. I have high hopes for this show as I think both of those guys are uh, serious, and when people are serious and do a good job, it raises the game of the sport and raises my game. I already have a couple of issues with the new show, but I'm going to wait to speak about it on um, after I listen to both these first two episodes. There's a man preview and a women preview, um, but go check them out. The OCR, you know, I've I've always give the love. Uh, I'm never afraid to spread the love on the podcast. Uh, I'm in little a little family, if you will, the family. Uh, that I'm involved in. Obviously, Josh does his podcast. Will, obviously. Uh, Mike and Caitlin over Overcome and Run. Sorry. Mike and Caitlin over at Obstacle Ring Adventures. And then uh, Jay and Heather, but it's now mostly Heather over at Overcome and Run. And we, we kind of, we should give ourselves a name maybe. Well, they're all the OCR report. So maybe it's the OCR report and Matt and Josh. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, 
I'm always uh, never afraid to give love to those guys if I feel you're getting quality OCR content, quality slash entertaining OCR content. And no, Jason, I don't, uh, I didn't forget about you. Jason, I also like, uh, go check out Jason and Anna over at OCR Talk. Uh, good people they are as well. Uh, but I can't mention everybody because, hey, that's, you know, I only have so much time in the day. On today's program, Nolan Campbell, man, he's been on the show almost as much as like an Atkins or a Boone. Nolan Campbell, 2019 Tough Mudder Preview. You're going to enjoy this quick chat with with Nolan. I think he and I get closer every year, and so uh, the chats get more and more fun, and we talk about things to look forward to. And oh, yes, why did they ever try the five-mile loop? Let's enjoy Nolan and I on a Sunday or whenever you're listening to this program. Away we go. So my assumption is world's toughest mutter ends. You pack up everything. You go home. You fill out a bunch of spreadsheets, and then you take a big nap. Is that what happens? Uh, that's 100% true except for the nap part. So, yeah. <laughs> you, you don't, in fact, take a large nap. No, not a big nap on my end. It's it, it's just as busy right after World's Toughest as it is kind of in the setup too. So. Don't, don't you get any me time? Uh, I get a little bit of me time. I get a little bit. Not, not as much as people might think, but yeah. Like, aren't you this outdoorsy guy? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I am an outdoorsy guy. Uh, I will say that the kind of the demands of the job have kept me uh, less outdoorsy than I was before. But that's okay because you know I get to I get to play outside for work. So you know I, I get to go to site, get to check out obstacles, get to go to a lot of uh, pretty amazing venues. So that kind of fills the gap. Now I'm trying to remember: Have we even talked? Since World Stuff is clearly we spent the weekend together, but like, did we do an interview after? I can't even remember. Yeah, yeah, we we uh, I think we talked about two weeks after. Okay, I, my brain is like a lot has happened since because I let's, but I think it's even better to talk about now because you do have time to really settle in. So you know, for example, I'm looking at the videos that are either living on the Facebook Live or 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 what have you. So how do you feel an obstacle like the gauntlet? How do you think it, it went from, from beta to real world WTM? And how do you think it'll like do out on the course or all the new ones for that matter? Yeah, I mean, obviously we've been uh, at the new obstacle game for a while. And I do think probably gauntlet and almost all the other new ones were probably the, the best I've seen from kind of beta into like world's toughest rollout and then prep for 2019 i think we we got them kind of turned around really quick you know in past years we've had to make a lot of tweaks a lot of adjustments uh between beta and world's toughest and then especially from world's toughest into 2019 to get them kind of season ready um but i think this year probably due to the experience that you know we had on on my team um and just the focus we had on it it, they, they came out really well so um it, it's always tough to judge uh, judge an obstacle like Gauntlet by its world's toughest performance because that one really depends on like people are going to be hitting it twenty four hours straight. Uh, right, it's pretty grueling. Um, so you have to take it with a, a grain of salt and say like, let's watch it on the first few laps. Um, even though it's really tough, this will probably play really well uh, on a twenty nineteen course. Well, and that's what a lot of people said about. Oh man, I can't believe I'm. My my brain is fried or not thinking clearly. Um, Mutterhorn? <laughs> no. <laughs> you're making, you're making a, a triangle shape with your with your hands that looks a lot like a, an A frame. Okay, how about like this? An inverted A frame. So you're making the shape of inverted like a V, right? But with a gap at the bottom, right? Which is Twin Peaks. Twin, Twin Peaks. Peaks. <laughs> Twin Peaks was an obstacle that many people said, "Wow, that looks super fun," you know, at a regular mutter. But oh boy, was it brutal during World's Toughest. So is well, that? One, is that is, and I, I think we talked about it at uh, uh, on Monday uh, to the rest of the group during the awards brunch. Um, we kind of knew going into World's Toughest after beta that we weren't going to take that thing into the 2019 season. I think it's going to stay in the hopper as like a as a great feature, maybe for like a Tough Mudder X type um, event. But uh, we, we kind of knew this one was uh, probably a bit a bit too far uh, for most, so uh, it wasn't going to make the 2019 season. So but we wanted to keep it at World's Toughest. 
So you think it's too difficult or you think like it's kind of a throughput thing that people will get scared and it'll create lines or both? A little bit of both. Um, I mean, for us, we always have to consider these obstacles have to handle you know, 10,000 participants on a weekend. Um, and for a lot of people, I mean, World's Toughest is, is pretty full of either very good athletes or very seasoned Tough Mudder participants. So like they, they know how to handle obstacles. But, you know, during the season, we do have a lot of, you know, first time participants, people who are kind of new to the game. So having something like that, you know, poses both, you know, getting people through it, but a, a, a difficulty challenge that might be too high for most. Yeah, interesting, because I don't, I feel like there are other things that might be, I don't know, scarier or harder. Like I said, people thought it would be fun to do just once, but you guys have your, you, you have your methods. How about for like a 12 hour? No? Uh, it's a potential. So yeah, like what I meant by keeping it for special events would be like potentially a Tough Mudder X or a Toughest or, you know, definitely in the world's toughest uh pool of obstacles which is fun for us to have sort of obstacles that are a bit a, a, a bit far in the difficult game that we could keep and kind of roll out at some of the select events where people really are passionate about like getting the biggest and the baddest so we were we were made aware of the four united states united states toughest i will not edit that later i can't say the name of my own country americas <laughs> everybody was all of us, all of the pre-exciting brunch chatter, we were convinced you were going to give us another daytime one, uh, and that didn't happen. Yeah. Is, is there something else going to be announced? Is there more Americas coming? Is there a daytime coming? Right now, there's no daytime planned. Uh, so we're going to be we're sticking with the 2019 calendar. Um, I definitely think it's something we want to keep in the hopper and you know potentially add to the to the growth of that format. Not saying it's impossible. Um, as you know, many things change as the year for us, and we love to make uh, last minute announcements and and big shifts. So, you know, anything's possible at this point. But right now, uh, we're we're keeping the calendar and plan as is for those four America's toughest. And are there is there two more coming, or already planned? Germany and Australia, or no? Um, Australia, I believe, is is potentially close to to coming on. I'd say that one is maybe ninety percent of the way there. Um, there's going to be one in the UK, um, and right now none plan in Germany. What, what the sort of, you know, qualifications, rules, uh, what do you call it? Elite status, <laughs> all the, all the category, like, uh, all that fun stuff. yes. When all is that all that, stuff. when is all that coming out? Um, I believe, uh, that stuff's coming out either end of January or, uh, February, early February. Um, and it's still definitely in the works right now. Um, so like. The team here is kind of finalizing the details. I'm not going to spill the beans on anything that might change in the in the next week or so, because um, there are a few things that we're really taking a hard look at, especially like Holy Grail, um, uh, overall like annual miles and tracking um, and what that means for participants. Um, so I would say like definitely expect that you know there's going to be some updates to how that works and some new rewards in that field. Um, uh, categories for world's toughest we're going to keep. Um, it's going to be mileage based, based on a, uh, a toughest performance, um, and different kind of award types like, uh, patches, um, potentially some medals coming out. So like, um, I think we'll, 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 we'll piece all that together in one, one big, uh, kind of competitive series update for the community, which I think is really exciting. I think most all of it, people are going to be pretty excited about because as it stands now, you get a medal for podium at Toughest or World's Toughest, but otherwise, Tough Mudder has never done a medal. Yeah, and Tough Mudder, the the weekend events, classic 5K, never get a medal. But uh, I'm not going to say definitely, but um, I'd say it's something we're looking into, Matt. It's something okay. we're looking into. All right, so let's talk about the, uh, if we can, the other... Uh, brands. So there's still tougher's, but it looks like there isn't the tougher championship and everyone is waiting on also TMX stuff. So can we talk about either or both of those tougher and or TMX? Sorry, uh, you broke up there. So I didn't, I didn't catch that last bit. What was it? I was asking about if, if tougher championships were coming back and or TMX, those are sort of the two biggest questions that I get. Uh, TMX, uh, 
we're we're not going to launch on that for a little bit. So we're still holding partly to 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 see what shakes out on the venue side. Location really is kind of what we're looking at for that one. Um, but currently in the works. Uh, Tougher championships, uh, very unlikely this year. We've already pulled them back. I don't think we're going to reintroduce them. So I don't think those are coming back. But the weekend toughers are. The first wave is still yeah. happening. First, first wave, it'll be tougher. Um, and that, that's going to stay the same. So that that's, I think everybody yeah should plan on that at every Tough Mudder weekend event uh, in 2019. And there and are... No championship set. Right. And there are, what are there, 20... 25 events in North America? Uh, 20, 27 in North America, so yeah, 25 in the U.S. Okay. Um, and the Canadian ones are what, Whistler and something else? And Toronto. Oh, okay. And so that, is that both ends of the continent? Yep. Do you go to those usually? I've not been to a Canadian mutter. Uh, Whistler, I, I usually get up to. I've never been to a Toronto one, but yeah. So what other news can we share at this time? I- well, we can talk about some of the the updates to Tough Mudder weekends too, like the stuff that we're kind of working through. Because the kind of mode I'm in right now is definitely in the in the ironing out of planning phase for all the the Tough Mudder events. So we're we're starting to get initial designs back from courses, um, starting to plot out kind of what's going to be uh, basically everywhere this year. Um, but looking at some some really some really awesome courses, uh, the 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 lack of the double loop certainly makes them a lot easier to, to plan out. It's going to be a lot more fun. So I think uh, still pretty excited about that, and hopefully people are. Um, we're starting to work through uh, the, the level up lane stuff. I don't know if you saw kind of the, the release of that, but all the details have been launched for, for level up lanes this year. We're really excited about them. I think the, the two big things for me on that, because um, we've had a lot of questions on, on what those are and, and what we're planning for, and I think you and I talked about it a little bit at Beta, kind of a shift it is for a lot of the, the participants who've, who've been doing this for four or five, six years, that it's, it's going to be a lot more fun to have optionality on course. So um, and I don't know if you saw the release, but uh, every, every course is going to have 10 level up lane options at 10 obstacles. Uh, the, the thing that I, I kind of want to come out of this is those are going to shift through the year. So you're never going to know what you're going to get, and they'll be different each time. So what we want to do is to kind of keep updating them. I'm really excited about, you know, adding new ones as the season goes on, like watching how people use some of the new obstacles. And these are things that we want to change and adapt uh, because the idea is to kind of challenge yourself in a different way on an obstacle. Um, So that might mean Funky Monkey might have a few different types of level level up lanes that we want to add into each course. Um, You know, some are going to obviously make the obstacle a lot more difficult, things like Kiss and Mud uh, or Entrapment. Participants will have kind of a lower lower um, crawl than other ones do. It's, it's going to make it a little bit different uh, and a little bit challenging. Uh, some of the the kind of cool ones, things like Everest, Berlin Walls, having a standard kind of like either Irish table added to it or Everest 3.0, so a section where people can really go after the the harder section of the obstacle. Um, electroshock therapy uh we've already got a few cool ideas in uh the one that we kind of launched in i don't know you're, you're squinting you don't seem so excited uh but we want to I'll add I'll, I'll nickname it uh, electric avenue section of it but we're going to beef up uh the wires um potentially the electricity probably not we'll, we'll keep it in a safe zone uh, but we want to beef up the wires so you're definitely going to be making contact with a lot more of of those uh and they'll be a lot more conductive and cage crawl i think uh Depending if it's going to come to everybody's event or not, having a kind of a, 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 a plexiglass uh, screen that people are going to be uh, crawling under as they go through the obstacle, which is pretty terrifying. Right. I, I saw. So we saw that one in beta. It, it had a few yeah. more kinks to work out when we saw it. So we, we we definitely got that one in a good place now, and I think that one will be kind of a top uh, a top hit this year. So exciting stuff on that front. We're we're I mean, really excited about them. It, it makes a lot more fun to plan these obstacles too. So. Um, it's kind of a great story for us this year. In the past, you did the Legionnaire lane was the way to do it, right? Which I thought yep. was which I thought was great. So, um, what you call it became. I used to be really good with mutter names. Uh, Backstabber. What's the other one? Uh, I used to be the Liberator. So yeah, right. there'd be Liberator, and then there'd be the Backstabber, right. and, and then the the Cage Crawl, and then was it Hard Rain? Rain Man. Rain, Rain, Man. Rain Man. Hard Rain yeah. is something else. What was hard rain ever an obstacle? 
Uh, nope. No. So anyway, but <laughs> I love that. I thought, I, we did a concept test for something called Acid Rain once, but uh, so, I don't but anyway, think- but I really I remember that year. I think it was sixteen or seventeen, and I love that. I thought that was great, um, and it kind of gave new people something to look forward to, and it kind of gave the experienced people sort of a little like kind of cool chip on our shoulder because, and obviously, like it was never man so hard that you couldn't try either but i think most people sort of played by the rules and as an experienced person you were like hey cool i've sort of earned this right mm-hmm. and the, for the new people it was like oh cool maybe i'll do that next year and then we always made the new people do electroshock right like it's your virgin yeah. you must do electroshock anyhow so you've done away with that piece and it's just choose your own adventure it's hey yeah. do you want to be the hard guy the middle guy the elite guy like that's that's th- it's not now based on status is what i'm saying Exactly. And I think that's kind of core to the theme of what, you know, early on in 2018, when we started talking about some of the issues that 2018 was having and the way we wanted to shape 2019 out is we wanted to go back to the basics on a lot of this and keep it simple. Like it's uh, we know what people like and it's obstacles. Uh, they don't want to run same page, same part of course. Um, and and they, they, they want to have fun at the obstacles. And I think, you know, it was a, a you know, a, a difficult decision on our end because you know there there is kind of the the, the status of of Mutter Legion and kind of how that was presented on course. Um, but the way we thought about it, and from participants we talked to, like the the main point is we want to have options. Um, it doesn't matter who you limit it to, who you don't have options, um, and make them good. So, that, I think in times like we could. We, we could have made things more difficult than it needed to be. I like this system a lot better because, you know, it's easier for us to plan and it's easier for participants to kind of enjoy it. So that's kind of the approach we want to do with all this. All right. So I'm not one to dwell on the past, <laughs> but I have to say this. I, to you. I have a feeling you're going to. I have a feeling you're going to. So as a concept of just to, and this is the last time we ever have to talk about it. I, I thought it was great that you stuck your chin out there and said, you know, give it to us. We know we screwed up with two loops, right? Um, <laughs> what's better than one scoop of ice cream? Two scoops of ice cream, right? <laughs> yeah. um, but I, I feel like, and this isn't limited to your company. Other companies do something which not just the hardcore community, but the community in general seems to go, well, that that seems silly. And then you end up going back to the other thing because – it just made sense. So to me, that one just seems like one that uh, I don't know that uh, like, yes, okay, well, let's try to save some money trying it this way and see how it goes. But people are probably going to hate it. You, you know what I'm saying? I just, I'm having a hard time wrapping around you guys who I, like, I know how good you are at your job. I speak very highly of you. I don't know how much you pay attention to my podcast, but I like, I, I, you know, people in this industry, you and Eli, you do amazing stuff. I, all the time. So anyway, that one just seemed like, an experiment that never needed to happen. And trust me, after I ask you this, I'll never ask you again. I mean, I, I, I think that's that's fair. Um, I think once we'd kind of committed to that plan, we made a lot of decisions around that that made it difficult to kind of revert back in year. Um, I don't know if, 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 if it's something that should have never happened um, because the that that concept of that had been floating around in the organization for years um to do um for for a few different reasons one of them was can we get people you know to to get more obstacles can we concentrate them more and get to different venue types because one of the things that we were seeing um was difficulty with venue locations and a lot of that has to do with acreage um and we thought we could get to some pretty cool places um that happen to have smaller footprints that a a, a, a 10 mile course doesn't fit on so that was like part of the theory around it um, I think from my end that, that concept, uh, of the double loop probably wouldn't have gone away unless we did do it. So <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to say like, Oh, do I wish, you know, that, that never happened. Um, I know the, the conversations I've had with Will, um, and other, other people in the organization would keep have, it would, it would keep that idea kicking around no matter what. Um, but I think it's probably one that we've kicked far down the road at this point. So that, that's. No, and I, and that actually that actually speaks like I get that. So as a business owner, like I get that. There's certain things. It's like all right, like it's been out there. We've got to try it. And yeah. then once you were in, you were you were you were yeah. in. Will Will is fond. It reminds me. Will is fond of saying that um, 
he he came up with this idea of the multicolored headbands and you guys supposedly all said you hated it but he really kept fighting on it like when you guys did the yellow and green and whatever Mm -hmm. yeah i mean i i don't think it's a it's a secret that you know i think in every organization there's a point when you know the the <laughs> the chief uh, is in disagreement with some of the other people, and I will say, you know, that has happened a lot in my history with Will because he and I worked very closely since almost day one. I joined right after the first event that we ever had, um, and I remember going through some decisions. You know, some worked out really well, some didn't work out so well, and like those are the types of conversations that you, that you have to have. And and yes, I when the the Mutter Legion concept kind of first came out one of my sticking points was kind of on the, the the color set and how it worked out. So I guess he was right on that one. So yeah, you know, that's fine. That's, that's, you know, how, how it goes. If it's one thing we know, I, I think we as a fitness industry know is that people definitely want stuff on pointing to all my medals. So yeah. you give them a chance to, you know, do these two races and you get a special one. Like if you can make it money wise, work absolutely do it because it's not all about that but it is definitely i think the people have spoken when it comes to uh, mm-hmm. give us new bling you know so you know well, anytime a, you know what I mean? it, it, it makes sense it's a it's a it's a tactical object that shows what you did it's you know what you take away really from tough mutter is an experience um and you can share that by talking about it and you know telling people stories from it um and you know it personally what it did for you. Um, but I think having kind of that object for people to remember that by is, is really important. So like it, it, it's a, it's a little totem or token that says like, you know, it's not about the actual fabric of the headband. It's what it means to you. So I think that that's totally fair and it makes sense. So you said you didn't have a ton of time. We're about at the 20 minute mark. Anything else before I send you off? Uh, nothing for my end. I'm really excited about this year. I, I feel like, uh, we've been liberated in a lot of ways to, to let loose on the course. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, the new obstacles are really great. Everybody's really excited about them. Um, and really excited about some of these, you know, first courses that are kind of coming back from the design phase and, you know, kind of recharge for this year. So there you have it. I had to do it guys. I I had to do it. I had to say, why did you just, it's been a head scratcher since they launched it, but now we can put it to bed and it can go away like, I don't know, what's an obstacle? What's a bad thing that's never coming back? Don't say Battle Frog. They they had a lot of good things. Um, We can put it to bed like whatever. I'll never ask of it again. We'll never speak of it again. I asked, he answered, he was honest, and I appreciate that, Nolan Comble. The first race of the year already happened. Big race, that that is. Spartan Chino. The Dude, the year is going to come fast and furious, guys. <clears throat> it's Jan 27. I'm already thinking about my travel to Jacksonville for Spartan. And there's just... The year is going to go by quick. So hold on tight. Uh, dig into all this content. If you like what I do and what ORM does, you can contribute via Patreon. We're going to be making more videos this year, and that's going to uh, be something I'm excited to bring you. So if you get value from this podcast, from me, from the videos that we produce, from the podcast, from the content, you can donate. Go to Obstacle Racing, sorry, patreon.com slash Obstacle Racing Media, and for as little as a buck a month, it just it just says, hey, I appreciate what you do, and uh, for the price of a cup of coffee, but it's not, because a fucking cup of coffee doesn't cost a dollar anywhere anymore. All right. Love you guys. Miss you. Mean it. Uh, Tuesday this week, new episode. And then Thursday, new Davis and Chase Obstacle Discourse. Thanks so much for listening. Gotta run.